Well, last week we did ink wash and watercolor. And um, I saw I had it split up to last week we were gonna do ink wash and this week we were gonna do watercolor. So I'm thinking we'll continue with the watercolor or ink wash, you could do whatever you want. Um, I'm curious to see those that were doing watercolor to see what else they've done. Jay did some ink washes and then Lily and Heather were doing some watercolor pieces too. Um, so I'd like to see if any of you guys progressed or did anything else. Um, anybody do any more watercoloring? We're gonna do more of that if you have any questions. Um, I have been working on a couple of pieces Just doodling, sketching, just playing around. So that board I had last time I showed you, the one that I, I told you I'd soak a piece of paper, watercolor paper, and then I would staple it to the board. So I've been working on a couple of things. Little doodle, coyote, then got the, the bugs. I was gonna dabble in acrylics maybe or gouache. That's just a piece of scrap cardboard paper. I did a, a landscape and I might throw some gouache on that. So, um, if you wanna join along, you can, or you can you know, work on your own project. Avery, have you been uh, doing any watercolor? I know you always got something to share. Well, maybe later, maybe later. Lily and Heather, did you guys continue working on your watercolor? No, don't don't apologize, you're fine. You have nothing to apologize for. Um, but if you wanna share something that you worked on later, that's fine, we're open to that. Um, Jay, did you work on more ink washes? Because that rose design was pretty cool. No worries. Well, when you're working with watercolor, like Jay was working with watercolor and I told her about this water brush, this water pen. And it's just a pen that you can open up right here and you put water in it. And so you can use water color pencils or you can use the water soluble ink that Jay was doing. And you can use any medium you want. So what I would have liked to have seen Jay do would be with the that rose design she had, it almost reminded me of a stained glass window. So it would have been interesting to see you do a drawing. I don't know, let's make, let's think of something right now. A piece of watercolor paper. And then watercolors are great if you want to do like a stained glass window. And I give Jay credit for that idea because that's what her piece last week reminded me of. So you can do just about anything you can think of for a stained glass window. Now, when you're sketching for your watercolor, keep it light, keep it easy. Doesn't have to be tight and concise, not unless that's what you're going for.
So there's a quick, fast, easy drawing. So in your drawing, it, it could be the same. It could be light, easy. Um, you don't want to, when you're using watercolor, you don't want to use something that's going to run. So once again, I got my two jars of water. One's to clean the brush and one's to get clean water when I'm making or mixing the color. Alexa, stop. So have any of you ever worked with gouache? Yes, if you're gonna do the thing that Jay did, you want to use, well, it could be a black ink or a felt tip pen, but something that runs, something that's um, gonna bleed, that's not waterproof. Yeah, no, if, if you work on that some more, Jay, I'd like to see what you get, because I like where it was going. I like what you did with it. And watercolor is forgiving, like I said. Suppose I, oh, there's too much water right here and I don't like it. All you can do is just take a rag or a towel, it's gone. You can pick it up. You can pick it right up. Okay, so you can see I'm not being really clean with my lines. And so some of my water color is running together. If that's what you want, that's great. That's called wet in wet. What I'm trying to do is called island wet wa island wash. Wet wash is where you keep everything separate. Next week, we're gonna to try to do acrylics if you wanna do acrylics. Now, the thing with acrylics, the thing with acrylics is that they dry relatively fast, which makes them great if you're trying to do quick work. But another thing about acrylics, oh, you could also use your rag. If, you're, if your brush is too wet, you can use your wet rag to damp. This is my artist shirt. So sometimes if I'm painting, I'll just use my shirt. It's specifically made just for art. So whether it's oils or acrylics. So everybody having a good week? Anybody um, 
I'd like to see Jay. You're on fire. I, you, I'm always curious to see what you're going to do next. Well, I'm glad that you guys, some of you guys, are trying the watercolor thing, because one part of being an artist is doing things that you're not used to. You want to be uncomfortable. Well, I'm not comfortable using watercolor. You know, oh, I'm, I, I'm not sure about the medium. I, I don't know if it's going to be good. But that's how you grow. You need to challenge yourself, push yourself. And there's no wrong. There's you, you. You can't do it wrong. People that don't make mistakes to me, they're afraid to learn because they don't want to make a mistake. So they do what they know. They 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 stay comfortable. They don't push themselves. They don't challenge themselves to try something different. Try something that might even be hard. But see you guys, this is a place to make mistakes and, and mess up and not worry about it because you're amongst friends. We all know each other. No one's, you know, no one's gonna laugh at you. You know, we're here to make art, have a good time, enjoy ourselves and learn. Amelia! Welcome. Are you going to be doing watercolors with us today? Yes, I I will. Do you have anything yet? Do you have any watercolors or anything? I don't, but I I mean I had, but I didn't brought them here. I have instead um markers that are water based. Nice. So Jay did something like that last week, where she did a drawing in watercolor and with uh, the ink, and then she used it to make a wash. Very cool. I want to see what you come up with. Okay, so now I, I have, it's a basic, simple, fun, light, nothing serious drawing of a turtle. So now I have my basis. One thing I'm not a big fan of is that big white background. I generally will sometimes put a wash on it, maybe an acrylic. So here's the thing. If I did a wash on acrylic and just made a, a different color background, make sure it's not too dark because your watercolors are translucent. So I was talking to you earlier, if anyone worked with gouache, This is gouache. They look like watercolor, but they're opaque, they're thicker. And like watercolor, you can see through. Gouache is pretty much thick and they're not as light. These are great for pastels. If you want a pastel with gouache, you have to um, mix a lot, quite a bit of white in it. But you can use the two. Watercolor is easier to play around with, to, to move. Um, gouache is more challenging. It takes a little bit longer to master. And a lot of times, once you put the gouache down, it, it's hard to um, manipulate it so much after that. Watercolor, like I said, oh, suppose this part to me, in my opinion, if this part is too dark and I don't like that, you can reactivate it and get it wet again. And you can pick some of that up. And if you want to erase the whole drawing, you could stick the whole drawing in a tub of water. You can even add a little bleach to it and that would fade the drawing and you could start all over. 
Watercolor is pretty versatile. If you go outside and you want to paint and throw some color down on a drawing, watercolor is the best way to do it. Doesn't have to be some expensive watercolor kit. It could be a, a inexpensive, you know, little kit like this. Something you could get at the grocery store or a, a basic art supply. Doesn't have to be really expensive. Now, if you start getting serious about your watercolor and you want to step it up, then you can, you know, you not, might want to buy a hundred dollar kit. These kits can get like, these are like five, ten dollar kits. They have some really nice watercolors. The paints are more fine. Um, they're less grainy. A lot of them come from Europe, from France. Very expensive, but very nice. Okay, so I got my basics in. Now what I could do is I could start pushing it more. So like we were talking in our drawing, remember the basics we did at the beginning of the year? We had our, our, our light, our form shadow, our core shadow, our cast shadow. We could start molding our painting so it has a little bit more form. So maybe I will touch up around the mask. So what I'm going to do then is, this is a very washed out red pigment I use. I will just use a little more red. And this is what some other, a lot of artists do as well. They do it with inks. When they're inking, like a cartoonist will be inking a, a comic book. They have a pad next to them. And they'll do this. And they'll look to see, is that the red I want? Because before they go directly on their piece, they're going to look next to them and go, oh, that's, that's the red I want, or it's not dark enough. So they'll do a test, a test stroke next to them. You'll see a lot of artists next to their finished piece, there will be a piece of scratch paper with all kinds of marks on it because they're checking their brush, checking if it's, is there too much water on this? Do I want it to have that much water? It's another little thing to, to test because it, it'll help you control how much paint, how much ink. Um, what's going to make a difference is what kind of brush you use. I'm using this brush because this is what was in my kit. I would use a cheap paint brush like this sometimes just to make a wash if I was doing a background. So it's fast, covers a lot of area. I generally like to paint with a brush. Hmm, let's see. Kind of like with this tip. I don't know if you can see it. Right here. With a tip like that. Because this tip can give you a fine edge and it can give you a, a big, a, a, a stroke, a wide stroke if you need it. This can come to a fine edge too, but not as fine as I could get with this one. This could give me a fine edge. But because it's so big, Now this will give me a fine edge. Much skinnier, much thinner. And if I wanted to go wide, I could, as I'm painting, I could turn, and I could go wide. So you got a lot of versatility with this. Not saying that this is better, each one has its own merits on which one will be better for. And be sure to clean your brushes after you're done um, using them. Don't use hot water. Use warm water, a little soap, and then rinse them out. Sometimes you could keep a little soap in it, um, just not too much. And then you, if after you wash it, you want to point it back out so it keeps its shape. 
Rarely, you don't want to sit your brushes down in your container. When you're painting, you generally don't want to keep them down like this for too long because that'll start changing and bending the point of your brush. And make sure you clean them with warm water or cool, not hot. Because if you use hot water, there's glue inside here that holds the brushes together. Some of that hot water, depending on the brush, can re relax some of that glue and your bristles can come falling out or a lot easier. It's just better, just warm water, gentle soap. So I'm gonna come here, I'm just gonna, once again, I'm gonna see what, what how much paint's on there. Okay, that's enough. So now I wanna just add value. I just wanna add value so you can see the edge of his mask, that there's folds and, and volume to it. And to me, that's a little dark. So if I pick it up, it's not that bad. But then I just need to go and water it down just a little. So now, now with those extra values in there, the mask is starting to, to turn. You can see it turning in space. There's more to it, it's not just flat. And so just remember your basic shadows, folds and clothing. I know we didn't really talk about folds, but that's something we can study. So when, you, when you're dealing with folds and clothes, it kind of fans out. So suppose this was a piece of drapery hanging on the back of a chair or a jacket. Your folds, they will start here, but they fan out as they go further away. That's one other little bit of lesson to, to stick in your toolbox of art tricks, art conventions, things to do and use when you need them. So if you look at, I got a little bit of fold going on here with this bandana and you can see they 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 fall out they it's kind of like a flower where it goes away it goes outward this should be mostly in shadow because that's just the knot but see how that water's building up right there in the corner not a fan of it so i'm going to pick it up that meant there was too much water on my brush. And like I said, I could use the side of my shirt or I could use my rag to pick that up, to thin that brush out just a little bit. Ooh, that's a lot of red. All right. Keep your rag nearby because that'll help you. That's your rag can act like your eraser. So it's knocking my values back more because it's I don't want it to be that saturated just yet because these aren't these are just like middle values. They're not going to be my dark, dark values. And from here, you could build on it. Start. The thing with watercolors, too, is you can layer it. Kind of like oil painting, where you can layer it. But with oil painting, when you layer it, 
and you're doing thin washes on in oil painting, they're called glazes. They're called glazes in oil painting, and, and a glaze where you're doing thin layers allows light to bounce back in between the layers and it gives a glowing effect. Beautiful. Any of you ever tried oil painting? It's, uh, it's on the hierarchy of, of art, oil painting is like one of the top ones. It's like one of the, the high end arts, watercolor, charcoal, they're down at the bottom with acrylics. What oil painting is like the cream of the crop. It's fun, it's messy, it can get expensive. Because the oil paints can be very expensive. You can get student oil paints. I suggest you try it. It's, you know, try try to paint, do everything you can. You're an artist. And you keep doing it, and you will find something that you really like. Like you might really like oil paints. You might like watercolor. I like charcoal and I like watercolor. Oil paints are nice, but it's a lot of work to set up. It's a lot of work to clean. And the thing about oil paints is they take a long time to dry. So you can do a painting and it'll, it'll stay relatively wet for like a, weeks, months even, because it's oil. It, it's not like acrylic is a plastic paint. So if you get acrylic on anything that you like, the only way you can get acrylic out is with scissors because it will not come out. It's plastic, it'll stick. So if you want to paint like glass or something like a shirt, something that you don't want it to come off of, acrylic is a good way to go. So I threw a little value in here. It's starting to come along, it's building up. I'm gonna let that dry. So the thing about oil paintings too is, on that one sheet where I had the other sketches I was playing with, on this one sheet where I was doing these, where I had the, the coyote and then I had Bugs Bunny in the background, I can work on one. While it's still drying, I could jump on another one. And then I could jump on another one. And then so you can rotate. Because you want it to dry, not unless, because a lot of times, depending on the paper and the paints and how, how dry it is, it can bleed into each other. Once again, wet on wet is where you're mixing colors while they're wet. But if that's not what you want, this will give you time in between. Okay, so is that red? And you can touch the paper, you can feel if it's cool. You can tell it's still wet. So, okay, now I'm just going to go back and I'm going to touch up on some of the greens. And I'm going to do the same thing I did with the red, is just build up values on it. And, and then so it, it starts having a three dimensional feel to it, where it starts rounding in space. Well, hopefully when things start to open up and if you guys are local, I would really love to have you guys come in and sit in and when we do in-person classes again. To me, that's the best. Because then I could, you know, I give you direct feedback. You can, you know, tell me how bad I am in person. And also, please, just a reminder, these are donation-based classes. Whatever you guys can give will help out. Um, helps pay for supplies. Helps, help, just helps overall that we can offer, because we don't charge for them. 
we work on donations. So whatever you can help promote the arts, help promote if you can. We're just glad that you guys are here. I'm glad that you're here, but give me your money. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Give me your money. No, I'm not. More, more money. I'm joking. I'm joking. All right, let's get back to painting. So see what I did with the mask? I'm doing with him. I'm modeling him. Now, understanding lighting helps. So if you look at a ball or an orange sitting on your counter at home, if you have a lot of different lights on, like two or three lights, you won't see the shadows really. But if you um going to um <laughs> yes, thank you, Tater. Share the wealth. Share the wealth, my friend. Um, but if you really want to study lighting, get one light, like a spotlight, and put it on a ball, an orange, or someone's face. And you will see what parts really go into shadow. Rembrandt. Rembrandt would do paintings, and they would call it Rembrandt lighting. Because right over here, there'd be a triangle. If you look at Rembrandt's paintings, in a lot of his portraits, there's a triangle on the opposite cheek. It's the lighting he would use. And that'll help you, because I'm, like you're saying, well, how do you know where to put shadow? Look. When you're painting, when you're looking around, when you're doing stuff, don't just see it, but really look at it. Look at it and study it, saying, oh, I never noticed there's a little bit of a rim light on the edge of that glass. If you ever look at paintings or drawings of glass, the, the clear parts, that's the paper. They do not draw the glass. They draw around the edges and the highlights of it. Everything around the glass paints the glass. It's the reflections. Everything else, they don't paint the glass, they paint around it. Take a moment and look at everything around you and see, oh, why is there a light there? Like this guy right here. My little baby Yoda ornament. See, as I move it in the light, All that reflection, the shadows change. Every surface, it's like a golf ball. Every surface, every change in angle on a surface will have a different value. Every corner, every, like my land shark right here. I love this guy. Like this guy right here. Every, see, the shadows are created not by lines, but the shadows are created by the shadows being projected, that's being cast from it. But the more lights you have, the more confusing it is to see where your shadows are landing or where they're going. Being an artist, a lot of it is observation. Because if you're going to draw a rabbit, do you? what does a rabbit really look like? Not Bugs Bunny, but a rabbit. Like if you really take a look at a rabbit. So draw, you guys. Draw everything you can. It'll just make you better. Oh, so next month in June. Next month in June is going to be personal projects or whatever piece you want to work on. Um, and, or just show up and we could draw together. If you have questions, you want help with something you personally are working on, that's the time to ask.
And you'll also see me do this quite a bit when I'm painting or drawing. I'll do this. And I'm air drawing. You ever seen someone play the air guitar? Like they're playing, they're pre pretending in their mind playing the guitar? Well, I'll air draw because in visual, I'm visualizing what I want to do with this piece or what the, what's going to happen with this part of the drawing. So I left this blank because the, these are going to be indications of where I'm going to put his shoulders. Once again, I'm going to test my line, see my color, a little too light. I want more. Eh, that's okay. I want a little darker. Add a little brown to it. Better. So then I'm just going to air draw. So I air draw. And I'm saying, okay, I want this to go here. Went a little too far. I'm going to pull that up. It's coming along okay. I'd like to share. Let's see what you got. Very cool. Hey, Nathan, I didn't know you were here. Good job. So what, 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 is that watercolor? Yeah, that's watercolor. That looks good. That's pretty clean too. That's pretty clean. Nice. Thank you. Good job. Thank you for joining us. You know, I wish you were over here too, Avery. Um, but you know what? You could still join us in on these Zoom classes. You know, absolutely. Good job, Nathan. Like I said, I'm just happy to have you guys here making art. It's nice to see people wanting to be creative and to try different things. Because it's to me, it's magic. You know, there's a bit of magic to it. Remember the first time you ever saw a Mickey Mouse movie or something like Star Wars where you're like, wow. This is where you can make stuff like that happen. You know, like you, the characters you guys make, right? All those cool characters, the places you make up. You guys can do whatever. No one can tell you that you can't make a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. No one can tell you your flowers can't have faces. You know, look at SpongeBob. Yeah, talking sponge. That's way too thick. That's way too dark, way too thick, way too saturated. Not yet. Mm. 
now I'm using cross hatching because I'm not in the mood to just paint that whole area in. So I'm going to use cross hatching to indicate shadow without having to paint that whole area. And this is where my thin brush comes in handy to allowing me to make those thin lines. Dimitri would like to share. Okay. Give me a second. I have to pull it up because I did it. No problem. Um, You've got um, digital art. <laughs> no problem. But yeah, it's a sketch, so it's not done yet, but okay. yeah. So tell us about your drawing. Uh, so this is for a thing I'm posting on Scratch. Uh, it's just a bit of fan art for someone because I really like their character. But uh -huh. uh, this is just to draw a, a head, like a head shot of their character. So, yeah. Cool. So how much more are you going to work on it? Quite a bit or a little bit? Uh, yeah, I'm going to do line art and then coloring and probably some shading. Very That's cool. cool. I would like to see, if you don't mind, if you want to share that next week when we get together, uh, we'd probably all love to see the finished piece. Yeah, 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 for sure. Cool. Good job. Thank Thanks you. for sharing. I like it. No problem. Anybody else want to share anything at this moment? Here's Tater. Hey, Tater. Hello. I just have a sketch of Wrecker from Bad Batch. Hey. I saw the first episode. It's pretty cool. It's very yeah. cool. Yeah. It's a pretty good series. Yeah, it's got good ratings. Nice. Tater, have you tried watercolor yet? Have you given it a shot? Um, a little bit for school. Other than that, not a ton. Yeah. It's great. Watercolor is great. And what Jay did last week is great if you're out and about. Like, you could be... I would take it to Disneyland sometimes. And I'd go and I'd sit down when I had an annual pass and I'd draw at the park. And I'd draw people and I'd draw the rides, the characters, and ink, the ink wash and the color quick way to get colored down and it, it's fast. And it doesn't take forever to dry if you don't use a lot. I see you raising your hand, Liliana and Heather. Thank you. What do you guys got? Hello, girls. Um. I see something. I see something on the table. No, 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 no. I don't think it yet. Oh, look at that. Somebody in the garden. That's nice. And you got clouds. I dig it. Good job. Thank you. Did you sign it? Uh, kind of. It's hard to sign with watercolor. <laughs> Then you could, you could sign it. Nice, nice. You could sign it at the bottom. When you sign it, doesn't have to be in watercolor. It could be a pen, pencil. But make a habit of signing it so when you're famous, everyone knows who did it. Good job. I'm not done yet. So. Can you share so far what you got? Wow! Look at the, nice. You got a gradient going on. You did so. You did the wet on wet technique, and you got the a nice little landscape. Look at you. You go. Good job. Thank you. Good job. You guys are doing awesome. All right, Amelia, what you got for us? See? I got this. That's nice. That's all watercolor? Yeah, it's all watercolor. I, I, I really like the detail and the coloring of the character at the bottom. Hold that up a little more. That's great. Great expression, too. And see, Thank you. I, I see you, you, you were doing your testing right on the side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it makes a difference because then you know what you're going to get when you put the brush down. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Wow, you guys are very impressive. Good job, everyone. I like it. 
Yeah. Um, watercolor, it's quick and easy. You can put it down, pick it up, put it down, pick whenever you want. Same with oils, same with just about any painting. But watercolor, it's easy to set up. You just need water, easy to wash. You don't need a whole lot of tools and brushes. And like I said, you could put that little packet and, and walk around and take it almost any place you want. They, um, I wanted to set you guys upside, outside uh, to do a little plein air painting. I got to find a place that I could Wi-Fi where I set up my Julian easel and do a little painting outside, but I don't know how the sound would work. But cool, keep it up, keep it up. Jay would like to share. Okay. Hello. So. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Good. I'm I keep adding stuff, so it's kind of not done yet. Might have been overambitious, but it's a hummingbird moth. No, it's not overambitious. You're you're experimenting, and you got that wet on wet technique going on, where it looks cool because it blends in. It's smooth. Very nice. Thank Very you. nice. Thanks, Jay. So I'm gonna just keep layering, and I'm. It depends what I'm working on. I'm either all in where I go with hard, dark, full strength colors, or I, I'm subtle. And with watercolors, I'm pretty subtle. Acrylics and oils, I'm pretty direct. Like sometimes I'll paint straight from the tube, just right on the canvas without mixing any paint. But it, it depends what you're going for. Now, we talked earlier. What, back back in January, we talked about colors. So if you look at the turtle, we have some complementary colors going on here. We got the red and the green, and those are complements to each other. Does anyone know what happens when you start to mix complements? It gets muddy, gray, it's, it gets dungy. So try not to mix complements, not unless that's what you're going for. Okay, now I'm still starting to really punch my colors up in the mask. I generally don't like to use more than three values on anything, a light, medium, and a dark. And then from the dark, the only thing that might be darker than my dark is if I use black. And then what my might come back in with a white acrylic paint and do some highlights on it. But um, generally, I like to keep the value simple, enough to read. You know, it doesn't have to be too complicated.
Now, some artists will mix in complementary colors to their main colors. It's to keep the, the painting harmonious so that you're, you're not completely separating colors. So you will see some in some parts of the painting where they'll have a little bit of green in the red. So that, remember when we're talking about story and they have the, the, the color schemes where I showed you the different moods? It's kind of along the same things as they keep the colors analogous or in harmony with what's going on. So it's a, like the whole painting is not just red and green. You got a little bit of each in, in throughout the whole painting.
Now, if I wanted to do more, I would get, I, I would put highlights and then I'd do a background. But it looks like we're running out of time, folks. Well, we are out of time, but a minute past due. Anybody want to share anything else before we take off? I'm glad you guys showed up today. By the way, send money. I'm joking, but donations help. Love you guys. Glad you guys are all here. Thank you for coming in. Um, we appreciate your donations, whatever you can give. Thank you, Scott. Anybody else want to add anything before we leave? No? All right. I will see you guys next week. Thanks, Daryl. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Keep drawing. Have a good week. Bye. You Thank you.